moving on to the next example for one-sided limits we have to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 to the power of 3 all over the absolute value of x plus 2. Now notice how we can make a direct substitution because if we sub in negative 2 for x this denominator is going to be 0. So we have to use a different strategy and because of this absolute value in the expression we can be pretty confident that we have to use the one-sided limit strategy. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take this absolute value of x plus 2 and create a piecewise function for it and we would use this general uh, result that we got here in the overview video. So the absolute value of x plus 2 when the x plus 2 expression is less than 0, so when the absolute value is going to be negative, then we would take that whole x plus 2 and multiply it by negative 1 to make it positive. And then if x plus 2 is greater than 0, if it's already positive, then we just leave it as is. So then simplifying the inequalities, x plus 2 is less than 0, that's the same as x being less than negative 2. And then this x plus 2 greater than 0, we would change that to x being greater than negative 2. So this here represents the simplified piecewise function for the absolute value of x plus 2. And now we can take that and incorporate it into this function here. We're going to make a piecewise function for the expression in the limit that we were given. So then creating a piecewise function for this original function that we're given in the limit, Basically, this absolute value of x plus 2, we change into negative x plus 2, as we did here when x is less than negative 2, and we change it to positive x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 2, and then this numerator, x plus 2 to the power of 3, that stays as is. So then simplifying that, x plus 2 to the power of 3 divided by x plus 2, this x plus 2 is like to the power of 1. So we would end up with x plus 2 to the power of 2, and then this negative is in front. And then x plus 2 to the power of 3 divided by x plus 2, that just ends up being x plus 2 to the power of 2, and there is no negative, it's just a positive. And then these inequalities stay the same. So this is the simplified piecewise function for this original function that we were given. And just to help us graph it, let's make a table of values. So for this leg here, let's pick the x value of negative 2 and a few x values that are less than negative 2. So then if we take these x values and then incorporate them into this expression for the y value, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So then 0 squared would just give us 0. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 to the power of 2 is positive 1, but then we multiply it by this negative 1 in front, so that becomes negative 1. And then negative 4 plus 2 is uh, negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4, and then 4 times negative 1, so that would just end up giving us negative 4. And then similarly, if we make a table of values for this piece here, when x is greater than negative 2, we would pick negative 2 and then a few x values that are greater than it, so negative 1 and 0. And then taking those x values and then plugging them into this function here, x plus 2 squared, we would end up getting the corresponding y values of 0, 1, and 4. And now that we have these tables, we can comfortably graph this piecewise function. So if we take that and graph it, this is how the graph is going to look. And notice how at that x value of negative 2, there's going to be a hole at a y value of 0 because at an x value of negative 2, the function is undefined. And then for all the x values that are less than negative 2, it's just going to be a parabola that opens down, which is negative bracket x plus 2 squared. And then for all the x values that are greater than negative 2, it's just going to be a parabola that opens up x plus 2 squared, hence why we got these shapes. And now that we have the graph, let's figure out the limit as x approaches negative 2 from both the left side and the right side. Let's figure out the one-sided limits. So as we approach negative 2 from the negative side, from the left side, notice how we're approaching that y value of 0. So that's going to equal 0. And then as we approach negative 2 from the positive side, it's also approaching that y value of 0. So because the limit as x approaches negative 2 from both the left side and the right side is approaching that same y value of 0, then we know the limit as x approaches negative 2, the general limit of that function we're given is equal to 0. 
So notice how in this case, unlike the other examples that we did for one-sided limits, the limit exists at a y value of zero from both sides it's approaching that same y value. So in conclusion, not too bad. Again, we just followed the same process, got that simplified piecewise function for the absolute value expression, and then incorporated that and then made a piecewise function for the actual function that we're given in the limit. And probably the trickiest part is just graphing these. Again, you can just make a table of values. And then unlike the other examples, when you graph them, you notice that at that x value of negative two, it's approaching that same y value of zero. So in this example, unlike the other ones, the limit exists. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.